a photograph there of the whole group um, performing in the last performance poem as part of the, the Billy Goats um, crossing the bridge scenes that were deleted from the original Hard to Swallow. And I show you that picture because that's the group who, bar one, all chose to stay on to become part of what would be RSCOYT's first production, first prop production. Um, it was so good to have all of them staying on. And we were augmented by two lads who brought up the, uh, the number of boys in the group because we, we only had two at that point. So they, they kind of made a, a much better balance of genders. Uh, Archie and Adam joined us. And uh, there we are, ready to do our second production. That's me outside the Romsey Drama Studio at the Romsey School that we used to work in. And I was joined by um, Alicia, who was in her just her year before she went off to do uh, drama at uni. And Alicia became my assistant director and was going to work on whatever the production was going to be. Now, during the workshops that we'd done, which were perfect, um, the, the group had come across a, a scene from a play I'd written called Kindness, which was, a, it was called A Legacy of Kindness, which was the, the amazing story of Susan Pollock, who is the, uh, an Auschwitz survivor. It's a play I'd been commissioned to write, uh, about two or three years before, so in about 2014 or 15, I think. And uh, we imagined that we'd be able to get the rights to perform it. I can normally get the rights to perform my own plays. This one, I'd worked with someone else, and weirdly, and I d just don't understand why, um, the whole permissions haven't and weren't signed off. And I was assured they would be by the time we started rehearsals. So the plan was that we'd perform that. My plan was. Um, the permission still, which two years later, so this is now like five or six years on, still haven't gone through. So the play sits in a file and no one has performed it. And it's a great tragedy. I hope that situation is going to get resolved soon because it's a, it's a powerful play and it's, it really needs to be out there and be performed. Anyway, we were left with the situation that we performed something else. I wanted to get one of these productions on DVD, uh, one of my productions on DVD, and so we had a very elaborate, everybody was sat around in the studio kind of deciding, looking at the, the synopses of the various different plays, and they went through all of my back catalogue, and finally they came down to this one, which bizarrely, had just been given a rebrand. I've never been part of a rebrand before. Um, and it had become Butcher Butcher Burning Bright in this very year. And I think that might have been one of the things that had excited them. So we were going to do this performance. Now, we did, we did do this performance, and it was a fantastic uh, play to work on. And I have to say, this uh, RSEOYT group, their attendance, everyone, apart from one boy on one evening um, because he was on holiday everybody attended so we had just the most committed uh, incredible group they they were fantastic and they were just wonderful so uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't ask for more uh, and thank you for Romsey School for letting us have this and we also had boys in the, in the play so um, not only that a tremendous support from the parents one of them Mark Leneve did this, which I look back on my whole career, and I would say this is possibly the best poster that I've ever had for any of my productions. Uh, wonderful cigarette lighter, and this, and it's a drawing. It's a proper, proper drawing. We commissioned Mark to do a picture of our two, a drawing of our two dogs as well. I mean, just a wonderful artist. He's got a website up, uh, Mark Leneve Art. Just the most fantastic poster. So we had everything going for us. Um, and... We staged it with a minimal of uh, kind of fuss. We had a, a kind of oil drum representing the, the table. There were two waste paper bins at the back. Um, Mark's daughter, Amy, played a pretty much silent role in this production of just a kind of looming presence of fire. And every time something dangerous happened, she lit this. Uh, it was a really interesting idea. Um, and this is the, the grandma of, um, of Shuttle. Uh, played by Jess. So we had a number of older people you'll recognise perhaps 
George from OYT and Eve from OYT, uh, joined there by Molly, who took on the main role. And a huge, huge responsibility she had in year eight. Uh, no, she was year nine by now, um, doing uh, such a big role. Molly is a huge role. And the most creative responses, this is a really hard photo to see, most creative responses to the, the fire scene, uh, you know, really wonderful. And in a small drama studio, we had Ollie, who was the technician there doing the lighting. Uh, and from a, a, a drama studio that's very hard to light, he managed to get, and you can even see it in this, this is just a photo, uh, you know, a, a paper printout. Uh, you can really see the power of the lighting in it. it. Really, really great. So thanks very much, Ollie, for that. And we also, amongst the, the young people there, we had um, Annie, who was Molly's mum. And I was ill one evening, and Alicia uh, was running the rehearsal, and Annie came in. And I just had this idea for the final scene that I really wanted to try and work on. And I'd seen Frantic Assembly uh, doing a play where the furniture had been removed. And I thought, in this scene where the policeman, played by Lucy, also from OYT, um, came in... I wanted this to be a scene where the character's mental furniture, so the mum and dad, their mental furniture was rearranged at the same time as the furniture in their house was rearranged. It is probably the best scene that I've had an idea for. I didn't actually do it because on that evening I happened to be ill. Um, wonderful, and thank you, Annie. It was just a fantastic collaboration by chance. Um, so if you get a chance to see the video, which we're, sorry, the DVD, which we did, um, it's a group of year eights plus three or four people from year 12 uh, doing a production of Butcher Butcher Burning Bright. It's, it's targeted at year, year eight. I say year eight. They were year nines. I keep saying that because when I met them, they were year eights, but they'd got a year older, as you do. Um, so there we are. We had the production. We had the programme with that wonderful poster on it. Um, lots of cast photos in it. We did a performance at the uh, at the Romsey School, and then I wanted to introduce this group of mainly Year Nines who had not performed uh, very much before. Um, I wanted to take them to perform at the Totten Drama Festival, uh, and I shall deal with how we got on there in the next episode.